Wider tyres are faster and more comfortable. It's what manufacturers are telling us, and well, I've said it as well. But what I want to investigate today is to see what impact changing your tyre pressure has on the vibrations that are felt through your bike and through you. And to do this, I'm going to use a clever app on my phone. Now, you don't have to be an expert to go, yes, a lower tyre pressure is going to result in a more comfortable ride, but that's going to come at the cost of rolling resistance. So what I'm trying to find out is where that sweet spot is between speed and comfort. So first off, we're going to have to find out a little bit more about these P0 TLR tyres. According to BicycleRollingResistance.com, one single tyre ridden at 29 kilometres an hour with a weight of 42.5 kilograms on it exhibits the following rolling resistance. So when ridden at 100 psi, you have a rolling resistance loss of 12.7 watts. At 80 psi, it's 14.3 watts. And at 60 psi, it's 16.9 watts. So to account for the two tyres that are on our bikes, you just need to double those values. And that's when worked out with a system weight of 85 kilograms. So that's the bike, all your kit and equipment and the rider themselves. So that's about right for me today. Now on my bike today, I've got the 28 millimeter version of these tyres fitted, whereas the test results I've just discussed were for 26 millimeter tyres but it should follow a similar trend, and that is that a higher tyre pressure results in a lower rolling resistance. So let's see how that translates out on the road when we start to drop those pressures down. Using a specific section of road, well, this section in fact, I'm gonna ride down the hill, I'm gonna free wheel, and I'm gonna be in one set body position. And then I'm gonna have my phone mounted onto my handlebars and use the app to measure the vibrations that I felt through my bike. The app uses the accelerometer that's built into my phone, which is all pretty clever stuff. Then, through using that phone, I can record the vibrations and compare the tyre pressure that I'm using and how fast I've gone through that section of road to try to see how much difference the pressure makes. To accurately measure the tyre pressure I'm using today, I'm using my Topeak Smart Gauge D2, which is a nice digital pressure monitor, which I can actually monitor the pressure with and also it's got a handy button to release some out so I can only let it down the correct amount that I want to. Otherwise, well, I'm going to be having to pump my tyres up and down all the time. It's no fun, is it? The pressures I'm going to be testing today is 100 psi, 80 psi, and then 60. And it depends on the outcome of the results. I might consider doing 40 psi just as a bit of fun. So first up, let's measure my tyre and see if we're at 100 psi. Um, well, it would appear we're at 95 psi, so we're gonna do the first test at 95 PSI, not 100. In the cobble classics, we see riders and teams really trying to find that sweet spot of comfort and speed through adjusting their tire pressures. They have the tire pressure slightly lower so that they have the control and comfort over the rough cobblestones, but that is gonna come at the expense of speed on the smoother tarmac. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but how does that relate to me? It's unlikely that any of us are gonna be going to do the cobble classics, but, we do very often ride on rough and bumpy road surfaces. So trying to be able to find that sweet spot is gonna help all of us out. So all that's left now is to conduct my little experiment. So this is my start point. I'm gonna get on the bike, roll all the way down. I'm gonna time my runs using my Wahoo smartwatch. All I need to do now is mount my phone onto my handlebars and to make life simple, I'm just gonna use some rubber bands. The app's actually working. It's quite cool to be able to see like a visual representation of the bumps in the road. Speed gradually dropping down now. So throughout the runs, I'm gonna to need to try and replicate a similar position that I'm riding on so that we've got a fair test. So now I need to pick a clear marker that's gonna signify the end of our test, which I think is gonna be this little road sign on the left. So, roll away to the start, and next to this, I'm gonna press pause and pause. Right, there we go. Test one. 
Test one done, let's set my pressures for test two now, which is gonna be 80 PSI. It feels a little bit slower. I can't really tell yet, but it definitely feels less bumpy. Last little bit, last little bit, last little bit. And pause. Right, pressure's down again, 60 PSI this time. Let's see how much difference that makes. Incidentally, 60 PSI, sort of pressure I'd regularly have on my tyres. So let's see if I've been doing it right or wrong all the time. Definitely feels more comfortable. Comfort is definitely improving. Oh, it feels like I'm getting slow now. Nearly, nearly. And stop. Right, I'm just gonna get my tire pressure set up for the final run, which is gonna be 40 psi. Now, I know that isn't exactly a common pressure that people are gonna run their tires at, but in the interests of science and Mostly fun. I'm going to test it anyway. Let's get these tires set to 40 psi, and hopefully they're not too squidgy and I roll along at an okay pace. God, that's going to be very flat. We do feel slower, but it definitely does feel smoother. I feel like the tyres are just soaking up all of the bumps, acting like a suspension, which is what they're designed to do, really. Oh, this last bit feels like it's taken ages. Come on, last a little bit. Last a little bit, last bit, last bit, last bit, and pause. That's the last test done and completed. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna find a nice, sunny, quiet patch of road, or maybe even off the road, and we'll discuss the results of my findings. Well, and see what's what, let's do it. Right, we've finished the experiment. I've made it to a nice comfy bench. So I guess now's the perfect time to discuss the results from my experiment. So in order of the way we conducted the test, so it went 100 PSI, 80, 60, and then 40. So the first run, we had a time of 1 minute 26, and the phone recorded an average vibration reading of 0.15. But what's that measured in? Well, that's measured in terms of meters per second, and it's in a rate of acceleration. And then on the second run, pressure of 80 PSI, we've got 1 minute 24 seconds. Average reading 0.14, so slightly less in terms of the vibrations felt on the phone. Then when we go to 60 PSI, I've got a time here of 1 minute 31 seconds, although we need to take three seconds off of that time because I didn't quite press the pause button on the recorder quite at the right time, which takes us to 1 minute 28 seconds with an average reading of 0.11. Again, less vibrations. So then on our lowest tire pressure, 40 PSI, we've got a time of 1 minute 34, and the lowest reading of all of our experiment of 0.10. So what have we actually learned from this little experiment, and what information and knowledge can we take away from this? Well, interestingly, by dropping the tire pressure from 100 to 80 PSI, I've completed that short little section of course two seconds quicker than that 100 PSI, and reduce the amount of vibrations on the phone. Whereas once we dropped the pressure below 80 PSI, well, I started to be significantly slower on the bike. So it would appear 80 PSI is that sort of sweet spot. And it seems like, well, I just need to pump my tire pressures up a little bit higher and well, I might go a little bit faster on the bike. But interestingly for me, it's a bit of a surprise because the rolling resistance data suggests that the higher pressure should be faster. But the reason I think that we're finding this results out on the road in the conditions that we normally ride in is because the tyre is able to do its job almost perfectly at 80 psi. And that is to act as a shock absorber and a suspension for the bike to account for the bumps and undulations in the road surface. And therefore, the bike is having to do less movements up and down and therefore your efforts are driving you faster and faster. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new from my little experiment. And if you did enjoy it and want to see more videos like this, well, consider subscribing to GCN Tech. And I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on tyre pressure. So let me know in the comments section down below what tyre pressure you would usually use on your bike. 
And all that's left for me is, well, I'm gonna go and feed the ducks, although not bread, because apparently bread's bad for ducks. Anyway, see ya.